Imagine a life where peace flows effortlessly through your mind and body, where stress, anxiety, and illness no longer control your every move. In today's world, so many of us are trapped in a cycle of emotional turmoil that manifests as physical suffering. But what if I told you that ancient Buddhist wisdom holds the key to breaking free from this? As the Buddha once said, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our minds strong and clear. These words resonate deeply with those seeking balance in a chaotic world. You're about to discover 10 transformative Buddhist principles that are not just spiritual ideas, but powerful tools to heal your entire being, both mind and body. How often have you felt the weight of anxiety or stress cloud your mental clarity and even weaken your physical health? Have you wondered if there's a way out of this endless loop? In this video, we'll unlock the secrets of ancient Buddhist teachings, guiding you to harmony, peace, and healing. Each principle builds upon the next, offering profound insights that can shift how you experience life's challenges. But stay tuned. There's one lesson, hidden among these 10, that could change everything for you. It's a game changer that many overlook, yet it holds the potential to transform your entire outlook on life. You won't want to miss it. So, watch until the end. Because today, you're not just learning to heal, you're learning to thrive. Understand the mind-body connection. In the whirlwind of modern life, we often find ourselves fragmented, split between the demands of work, relationships, and the endless pull of distractions. In this chaotic disconnection, we fail to realize that our minds and bodies are inextricably linked. Stress doesn't just live in your thoughts, it sinks deep into your muscles, tightens your chest, and clouds your spirit. Healing the mind heals the body. They are not separate, but one. Buddhism teaches that this mind-body connection is not merely philosophical. It is a truth, as natural as breath itself. Lord Buddha said, there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. This isn't a call to ignore suffering. Rather, it is a reminder that healing begins with recognizing that your mental state shapes your physical well-being. The pain you feel in your back may be rooted in unresolved anxieties. The fatigue that drags you down could be a reflection of mental clutter. To begin healing, you must first acknowledge this connection. Take a moment each day to sit in stillness, allowing your breath to guide you back into your body. This simple act of mindfulness brings mental clarity, which in turn eases the tension held in your body. It's not about escaping your thoughts, but facing them, and in doing so, liberating your physical form from the weight of stress. Consider how many entrepreneurs and leaders, once trapped in the high-pressure vortex of their careers, have turned to mindfulness to reclaim their health. By meditating, they've learned to center their minds, dissolving the chaos that plagued their bodies. They discovered that in quieting their thoughts, their bodies too could rest, rejuvenate, and heal. But acknowledging the mind-body connection is just the beginning. The next step is learning how to maintain that balance when life throws its inevitable challenges your way. How do you stay grounded when the storm hits? How do you prevent the mind from dragging the body into exhaustion? The answer lies in the next principle, one that teaches us to remain poised in the face of difficulty, to balance our inner worlds, no matter the outer chaos. This balance, like a candle in the wind, is delicate yet possible, if you know how to protect its flame. Cultivate equanimity to maintain balance in adversity. When adversity strikes, emotions rise like waves in a storm. Anger, fear, sadness, all crashing through the mind, unsettling the body. In these moments, the nervous system responds with tension, causing stress to spread through every muscle, weighing down the heart and constricting breath. Yet, Buddhism teaches us a powerful remedy for these storms, equanimity, the practice of remaining calm and centered amidst the chaos. Inner balance is the shield against emotional storms that harm the body and mind. Equanimity is not about numbing yourself to pain or difficulty. It's about cultivating a steady mind that can observe emotions without being overwhelmed by them. As Lord Buddha said, to understand everything is to forgive everything. 
This means seeing beyond the immediate hurt or challenge, recognizing the deeper patterns of life, and forgiving the world for its inevitable suffering. By doing so, we protect both mind and body from the corrosive effects of prolonged stress. In stressful situations, our emotions cloud judgment, tighten muscles, and elevate heart rates. When equanimity is practiced, the mind learns to stay grounded, unshaken by the winds of hardship. This emotional balance keeps the body's nervous system calm, reducing anxiety and preventing the physical deterioration that comes from chronic stress. When your mind is still, your body can begin to heal. Consider the example of Buddhist monks who, despite facing personal loss or hardship, maintain a serene composure. Their inner balance is not a gift of circumstance, but a cultivated skill, years of training and mindfulness, which allows them to witness their emotions without being consumed by them. This calmness inspires many in high-pressure environments, whether executives struggling under work deadlines or individuals navigating turbulent life transitions. They see that inner peace is not dependent on the absence of challenges, but on how one responds to them. You too can practice this. In your next moment of stress, pause. Feel the breath in your chest, allow your body to relax, and observe the storm within you without reacting. It is in this space, between emotion and reaction, that you find equanimity. Over time, this practice becomes your inner armor, protecting you from emotional overwhelm and its physical toll. Yet, equanimity is just the beginning of healing. To truly transform the mind and body, we must dive deeper into the core of our being. And here, breath becomes a sacred tool, guiding us into profound healing. Next, we will explore how the simple act of breathing with awareness can change not only your mind, but your entire physical state. Use breathwork as a tool for healing. In the rush of life, we often forget the most fundamental act that keeps us alive, breathing. Stress shortens our breath, making it shallow, erratic, and filled with tension. We gasp our way through anxiety, unaware that each shallow breath tightens our chest and amplifies the very symptoms we seek to escape. But in Buddhism, the breath is sacred, a powerful tool for healing both the mind and body. The breath is the bridge between mental clarity and physical health. When we breathe deeply, intentionally, we invite calm into our being. As Lord Buddha taught, breathe in deeply to bring your mind home to your body. This simple truth reminds us that the breath is not just air, it is a direct path to mindfulness. By focusing on the breath, we reconnect the mind to the body, calming the nervous system, lowering the heart rate, and releasing the grip of stress that holds us captive. Breathwork is not reserved for monks or spiritual masters. It is a practice available to anyone at any moment. When stress rises and anxiety threatens to overwhelm you, pause, take a slow, deep breath, let the air fill your lungs fully, expanding your chest, and then exhale slowly, releasing the tension from your body. This practice, though simple, is profoundly effective in healing. It brings the mind back to the present, slowing the racing thoughts and creating space for stillness. Over time, breathwork promotes not just mental clarity but physical health, reducing the harmful effects of chronic stress. Artists and public speakers have long relied on breathwork to center themselves before stepping into the spotlight. In moments of high pressure, they don't just focus on their craft, they focus on their breath, knowing that in mastering it, they master their anxiety, their heartbeat, their body. Their minds clear, their bodies follow, relaxed and ready. For you, the practice of mindful breathing can be a daily ritual. In moments of stress, before a meeting or at the end of a long day, integrate simple breathing exercises. Sit quietly, close your eyes, and follow your breath, allowing it to slow naturally. This practice will not only calm your mind, but also support your body's healing process, reducing the effects of anxiety, fatigue, and physical tension. Yet, while breath work helps calm the body, the mind itself holds deep patterns of thinking that also need healing. Once we have mastered our breath, the next step is to purify our thoughts. Let us explore how right thinking can detoxify the mind and cleanse the body from within. 
detoxify your mind through right thinking. The thoughts that fill your mind every day are not harmless. They shape your reality. Negative thought patterns like seeds of doubt and self-criticism take root, growing into emotional stress that seeps into the body, creating tension, illness, and fatigue. Buddhism teaches that right thinking is the foundation for a healthy mind and body. When we let harmful thoughts fester, we poison ourselves from within. Lord Buddha's words echo through time. The mind is everything. What you think you become. This is not a metaphor. Your mind, the endless stream of thoughts, determines the state of your emotional and physical health. Negative thoughts tighten the body, create stress, and prevent healing. But right thinking, thoughts aligned with compassion, peace, and love, brings clarity to the mind and calm to the body. This is the key to detoxifying not just the mind, but your entire being. Right thinking is a practice, a conscious choice to uproot thoughts that cause harm and replace them with ones that heal. The next time your mind spirals into negativity, pause and ask yourself, what am I telling myself? Replace self-criticism with a simple life-affirming truth. I am enough. Replace doubt with a gentle reminder. I am capable. In doing so, you align your thoughts with healing and your body responds with ease. Your muscles relax, your stress diminishes. Your body will thank you with reduced stress and better health. Consider the great minds like Albert Einstein, who often spoke of the power of thoughts in shaping our reality. They understood that the mind is a tool a powerful instrument that creates the world we live in. Whether that world is one of peace or suffering depends on the thoughts we nurture. Einstein, like many others, recognized that reality bends to the will of the mind. Your thoughts are not passive. They create the structure of your life and with them, you can either create illness or foster healing. Begin today by replacing self-defeating thoughts with affirmations that support your well-being. When a thought arises that says you are not worthy, counter it with a thought of self-compassion. When the mind tells you that stress is inevitable, remind yourself that peace is always within reach. This shift in thinking doesn't just calm your emotions, it creates a ripple effect, healing the body from within. Yet, even as we train the mind to think rightly, there are deeper attachments, old fears, desires, and worries that still hold us back. To truly heal, we must learn to release these attachments and free ourselves from the suffering they bring. The next step is learning how to let go. Let go of attachments to reduce suffering. We spend so much of our lives grasping, trying to control every outcome, every moment, every detail. But in this need to control, we create a prison of our own making, a cage that tightens around the mind and constricts the body. True healing starts when we let go of the need to control and instead embrace life's flow. In Buddhist wisdom, attachment is seen as the root of all suffering. We suffer not because life is difficult, but because we cling to the illusion that we can bend it to our will. We hold on to expectations, to outcomes, to people, and in doing so, we create a mental and physical tension that eventually manifests as pain, stress, and illness. Lord Buddha said, you only lose what you cling to. These words remind us that holding on too tightly is the very reason we suffer. To heal, we must let go. Let go of the need to control every aspect of your life. Let go of the attachment to outcomes you cannot dictate. This act of release is not about giving up. It's about surrendering to the natural flow of life, trusting that things will unfold as they are meant to. In that surrender, your mind finds peace and your body follows, easing the tension that comes from constantly being on edge. Take a moment to reflect on the areas of your life where attachment to control is creating stress. Is it your job, where you strive to micromanage every detail, or in your relationships where you cling to how others should behave? Recognize these attachments and understand that in letting go, you gain something far greater, freedom. Emotional freedom from the need to dictate every outcome and physical freedom from the stress and illness that control brings. Entrepreneurs often embody this lesson. The most successful among them realize that true success does not come from obsessing over control, but from releasing it. 
They find that when they let go of their need to dominate every variable, when they embrace uncertainty, they allow creativity and success to flow more naturally into their lives. This principle holds true, not just for success, but for healing. Letting go is not a one-time act, it's a practice. Each day, remind yourself to release the grip of control and watch as your mind and body begin to relax, to heal. But as we release our attachments, there is another essential ingredient to healing that cannot be overlooked, kindness. As we let go, we must also learn to cultivate kindness toward ourselves and others for true healing to take root. This is the next step in our journey toward wholeness. Practice loving kindness for inner healing. So many of us carry deep wounds, emotional scars hidden beneath the surface, born from self-criticism, judgment, and pain. These wounds do not remain in the mind alone. They manifest in the body, creating stress, tension, and illness. Buddhism offers a profound antidote to this suffering, the practice of loving kindness, or metta. Healing thrives in a compassionate heart, and metta meditation nurtures emotional and physical health. In metta, we learn to extend love, not just to those around us, but first and foremost to ourselves. The words of Lord Buddha ring clear. Radiate boundless love towards the entire world. But to truly radiate this love outward, it must begin within. When we open our hearts to self-compassion, we soften the harsh edges of self-criticism and judgment. This act of kindness is not a luxury. It is essential for healing. Emotional wounds cannot close when we continue to tear them open with harsh thoughts. Loving kindness soothes the mind, easing emotional turmoil, and in doing so, allows the body to release its tension, reducing stress and promoting healing from within. The practice of metta is simple, yet transformative. Each morning, begin with a moment of stillness. Inhale deeply, and with each breath, offer yourself words of kindness. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be at peace. Feel the warmth of compassion as it fills your heart. From there, extend this love outward to your family, to your friends, and eventually, to all beings. This is not merely an emotional exercise. It creates a profound shift in the nervous system, calming both mind and body. Over time, this practice reduces stress, alleviates anxiety, and even improves physical health. Buddhist practitioners have demonstrated that loving-kindness meditation has tangible benefits. Studies have shown that those who practice metta regularly experience improved mental health, reduced symptoms of depression, and even a boost in immune function. When we fill ourselves with compassion, it strengthens not only our emotional resilience but our physical defenses as well. To heal the wounds of the heart, we must first offer ourselves the gift of love. It is through this daily practice of kindness that we begin to mend what has been broken. And as we heal ourselves, we also find the capacity to extend that healing to others, creating a ripple of peace in a world that so desperately needs it. But metta is just one aspect of the journey. Loving kindness sets the stage, but to overcome deeper pain, we must also learn to meditate regularly, quieting the mind to confront the roots of our suffering. The next step in healing is learning how to meditate through pain, transforming it into peace. Meditate daily to overcome emotional and physical pain. In the chaos of life, we often find ourselves trapped in cycles of emotional and physical pain, searching desperately for relief but rarely finding it. The weight of chronic stress, unresolved trauma, and illness can feel unbearable, as if there is no escape. But Buddhism teaches that the path to healing does not lie in the external world. Meditation is the gateway to both mental peace and physical recovery. As Lord Buddha wisely said, peace comes from within. Do not seek it without. In meditation, we create a space where the mind can settle and the body can release its tension. This stillness is not passive. It is deeply transformative. When we sit in silence, Focusing on the breath or a point of awareness, we allow the mind to process buried emotions and unhealed wounds. It is through this practice of mindful awareness that we begin to soften the pain, both mental and physical, that we carry within us. Daily meditation is a powerful act of self-care. 
You don't need to spend hours in deep meditation to experience its benefits. Even 10 minutes each day can initiate profound shifts in the body and mind. In those moments of stillness, the nervous system calms, stress hormones decrease, and the body begins to heal itself. Emotional traumas that were once overwhelming start to lose their grip as the mind learns to observe them without becoming entangled. Meditation becomes a sanctuary, a place where healing can take root. Consider the stories of athletes who have suffered from physical injuries or CEOs burned out from the relentless pressure of work. Many of them have turned to meditation, not just to calm the mind, but to heal the body. Athletes have found that meditation helps them recover more quickly from injuries, as the practice of mindful awareness reduces inflammation and encourages the body to repair itself. CEOs and entrepreneurs, burdened by chronic stress, have discovered that meditation helps them to recharge, preventing burnout and restoring their mental clarity. The mind and body are deeply interconnected and by calming the mind, we initiate a healing process in the body. Meditation, when practiced daily, becomes a pathway to recovery, a way to quiet the storms within and allow the natural healing processes of the body to take over. It is not an escape from pain, but a way to transform it into peace. Yet as we meditate and heal, there is another essential practice that amplifies this healing. Gratitude. Gratitude nourishes the mind, shifting our focus from what is lacking to what is abundant. Next, we will explore how cultivating gratitude accelerates the healing of both the mind and body. Cultivate gratitude to boost mental and physical health. We often become consumed by what we lack, what's wrong in our lives, what we haven't achieved. This fixation on scarcity and imperfection clouds our minds with stress and discontent, which slowly poisons the body. Yet in the heart of Buddhist wisdom, there lies a profound truth. A grateful heart nurtures the body and brings peace to the mind. Gratitude is not merely a nice idea. It is a practice, a way of being that shifts our focus from what is missing to what is already abundant in our lives. Lord Buddha's words remind us to embrace this simple truth. Let us rise up and be thankful. When we begin to focus on the blessings we already possess, the mind softens, the body relaxes, and we tap into a powerful force that nurtures both our emotional and physical health. Gratitude creates space for peace to flourish where stress once ruled. The effects of gratitude reach far deeper than we often realize. Research has shown that those who practice gratitude regularly experience lower levels of stress, improved immune function, and overall better mental health. When we express gratitude, we release the mental chains of anxiety, and in doing so, we also release the physical tension that often accompanies it. Gratitude turns the attention from the struggles and gaps in our lives to the gifts we already hold, shifting our internal dialogue from one of lack to one of abundance. You can begin this practice today in a simple and powerful way. Start a gratitude journal. Write down three things you are grateful for each day. These don't have to be grand gestures or life-changing moments. They can be as small as the warmth of the sun on your skin or the smile of a loved one. Each act of acknowledgement nourishes the mind, easing emotional burdens and promoting physical well-being. Over time, this daily practice will rewire your mind, allowing gratitude to become your natural state of being, even amidst challenges. This is not just a mental exercise. It is a holistic healing practice. Gratitude lowers cortisol levels, calms the nervous system, and strengthens the immune system. It turns the tides of stress and brings the body and mind back into balance. Just as researchers have shown, the daily practice of gratitude offers tangible health benefits, making it one of the most powerful tools for healing. Yet, as we cultivate gratitude, there's more to healing. Gratitude fosters healing in the mind, but being present in the moment takes it to another level. Next, we will explore how mindfulness can further deepen this journey of healing and transformation. Embrace mindfulness to heal the mind and body. In the ceaseless noise of the modern world, distractions constantly claw at your mind. You're torn between deadlines, expectations, and the persistent pressure to keep moving. 
even when your spirit cries for stillness. This chaos of life, this relentless tension, gnaws away at your well-being, leaving you drained, physically and mentally. But what if the path to healing lies not in the rush, but in the stillness you've forgotten to embrace? Healing begins with the present moment. Anxiety fades when the mind is anchored in the now. The ancient wisdom of Buddhism whispers to us, when you realize nothing is lacking, the whole world belongs to you. This is the essence of mindfulness. In this very moment, free from the worries of the future and the regrets of the past, there is peace. It is in the now that true healing begins, for when the mind quiets, the body listens. Stress and anxiety no longer tighten their grip on you when you choose to exist fully in the present. Mindfulness invites you to return to your breath, to feel the earth beneath your feet, to taste the food on your plate, not in a rush, but in full awareness. Imagine each step you take as a sacred act of being, each breath as a renewal of life. It is not only the mind that benefits from this presence, the body too relaxes, allowing tension to dissipate. Healing flows through the body when the mind ceases its constant chase of what was or what will be. Consider the workplace where stress often thrives unchecked. Modern corporations have integrated mindfulness practices to combat burnout, recognizing that employees, when mindful, experience not only a sense of calm, but also greater physical health. Mindfulness is no longer a distant philosophy. It is a tool, actively reshaping lives, saving both the mind and the body from the devastating effects of chronic stress. As mindfulness anchors us in the present, solitude deepens our healing process. To heal is not just to pause, but to retreat inward into a space untouched by the external world. Solitude is where we confront ourselves, where the noise subsides and we face the truth of our being. Alone, there is nowhere to hide from our inner wounds, yet this is where healing begins. In the stillness, we learn to care for ourselves. Solitude isn't loneliness. It is a sacred space where the soul finds rest and the body follows. This is where the journey of true healing unfolds. The more you learn to be present with yourself, the more deeply you heal. In this sacred practice, you find peace, clarity, and strength beyond measure. Find joy in solitude for deeper healing. In a world that glorifies constant connection, the idea of being alone strikes fear into many hearts. Solitude is often mistaken for loneliness, a void, an emptiness that many run from, seeking distractions to fill the silence. But in the teachings of Buddhism, solitude is not a barren wasteland, but a sanctuary for the soul. It is within this quiet space, free from the clamor of others, that true healing begins. We are gifted the opportunity to turn inward, to face the parts of ourselves we have long ignored, and to nurture the wounds that silently weigh us down. Healing is nurtured in moments of solitude where the mind finds peace. In the silence of solitude, the soul finds its path. This ancient truth reminds us that when the noise of the world fades, we are left with the raw essence of who we are. Solitude gives us permission to stop performing, to stop pretending, and to simply exist. In this state of being, we confront our emotions, our fears, our sadness, our anxieties, without judgment, but with a tender curiosity. And through this confrontation, we heal. The quiet allows our minds to rest, our bodies to relax, and our spirits to repair. Solitude doesn't mean isolation from the world. It means creating a sacred space for yourself. It is not about withdrawing permanently, but retreating momentarily to find clarity. Imagine sitting in a quiet room with no distractions, only your breath to anchor you. This is where the mind lets go of its endless chatter, where stress dissolves, and where you can finally hear the whisper of your soul. In this stillness, the body follows the mind, releasing the tensions that come from daily stress and anxiety. Healing, then, becomes a natural process, undisturbed, unhindered. Many of history's greatest minds have sought solitude to achieve deeper understanding and transformation. Think of Buddha himself, who found enlightenment under the Bodhi tree after withdrawing from the world. Artists and writers, too, retreat into solitude to reconnect with their creativity, 
finding peace that fuels both their work and their well-being. Solitude offers a sanctuary for profound healing, but it requires courage, the courage to be alone, to face yourself, and to trust that in the silence you will find peace. While solitude allows us to heal inwardly, true healing is incomplete without self-love and compassion. In these quiet moments, we are given the space to not only reflect on our pain, but also to offer ourselves the kindness we so often withhold. Solitude teaches us to listen to our hearts, but it is self-love that transforms this listening into a deep and lasting healing. And so, the journey continues towards a gentler, more compassionate understanding of ourselves. Embody compassion and self-love for complete healing. So many of us are harsh critics of our own souls. We carry the weight of our past mistakes, self-doubt, and insecurities, allowing them to poison our hearts and minds. This relentless self-criticism creates walls, preventing us from experiencing the true healing we seek. But within the teachings of Buddhism lies a simple, profound truth. Healing begins when we learn to love ourselves. The road to wholeness is not paved with judgment, but with compassion both toward ourselves and others. Healing begins with self-love and compassion for yourself and others. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. These words remind us that we are not exempt from the kindness we so willingly give to others. Yet, how often do we extend that same gentleness to ourselves? We live in a world that demands perfection where mistakes are met with shame. But in Buddhism, mistakes are not failures, they are lessons. And it is through the lens of self-compassion that we transform these lessons into growth. When you fall, don't criticize yourself for stumbling. Instead, offer yourself a hand to rise again. The healing power of self-love cannot be understated. When you nurture yourself with kindness, your stress levels decrease. The physical toll that anxiety and tension take on your body begins to loosen its grip. Compassion creates a space of peace where your mind and body can rest, recover, and heal. It's in this gentleness with yourself that your emotional scars begin to mend, and with them, your physical health flourishes. Consider the stories of those who have embraced self-love and found healing. Oprah Winfrey, for instance, speaks often of how learning to love herself transformed her emotional health. Through self-compassion, she developed resilience and her body responded to the peace that compassion brought to her mind. Like many others who have walked this path, she found that true healing isn't just about caring for the body, it begins in the heart. This practice of self-love doesn't need grand gestures. Start by being gentle with yourself when you make mistakes. Instead of replaying your errors over and over in your mind, take a moment to breathe and remind yourself that you are human. In this moment of tenderness, your body and mind can release the stress they've been holding. Healing becomes not just possible but inevitable when compassion leads the way. Self-compassion is vital for healing, but lasting transformation requires consistent effort. As you cultivate this loving attitude toward yourself, remember that healing is not an event, it is a journey. In the next step of this journey, we explore how daily rituals can sustain this inner peace ensuring that your healing process is both profound and enduring. Stay committed to daily rituals of mindfulness and meditation. Healing is not a fleeting moment of clarity, nor is it a single act of relief. It is a journey, one that requires dedication and a deep, unwavering commitment. Many of us embark on this path with great intentions, but as life becomes overwhelming, we falter, and the practices that once brought us peace slip away. Without consistency, healing remains incomplete, a whisper of what could be. True transformation occurs when we make mindfulness and meditation a daily ritual, a sacred routine that anchors us in peace, no matter how turbulent the world becomes. Healing becomes a lifestyle when mindfulness is practiced daily. Buddhist philosophy teaches us, with our thoughts, we make the world. This profound wisdom speaks to the power of the mind and how it shapes our experience of life. When we allow our thoughts to run unchecked, they become chaotic, filled with stress and anxiety. But when we guide our thoughts through mindfulness and meditation, we reclaim control over our world. 
Healing, then, is not something that happens to us. It is something we create every day with every thought we choose to entertain. Daily rituals of mindfulness and meditation are the foundation of this ongoing healing. They are not burdens to bear, but gifts we give ourselves. In the quiet moments of meditation, the mind finds stillness, and in that stillness, the body relaxes. Each breath becomes a healing act, each moment of awareness a step toward inner peace. These practices are not about escaping the world, but about facing it with a calm heart and a clear mind. It is in this consistency, this daily commitment, that healing becomes not just an experience, but a way of life. Imagine starting with just 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes to sit in stillness, to breathe deeply, to let go of the worries that cloud your mind. As the days pass, those 10 minutes expand, the benefits compound, stress fades, anxiety weakens, and your body begins to heal from the inside out. Over time, this daily practice transforms you, not only mentally and emotionally, but physically as well. Consistency is the key to unlocking this transformation. Look to those who have embraced these rituals, CEOs, athletes, spiritual leaders. They often attribute their health, their resilience, their success to the practice of daily mindfulness and meditation. They understand that it's not a luxury, but a necessity. This commitment to self-care, to daily introspection, is what sustains their energy, their focus, and their healing. Healing, in its truest form, is not something you reach once and hold on to. It is a lifelong journey, one that requires devotion but rewards you with peace, clarity, and profound well-being. Healing the body and mind is a journey, a journey that requires dedication, patience, and an unwavering commitment to your well-being. As you embrace these Buddhist principles, you'll begin to see a shift, not only in your health but in the way you interact with the world around you. It's not about quick fixes or temporary relief. It's about nurturing a deep, lasting transformation from within. True healing isn't just about fixing what's broken. It's about finding balance, peace, and strength from within. By applying these 10 Buddhist principles in your daily life, you'll not only heal but thrive in ways you never thought possible. The mind and body are intricately connected, and as you tend to one, the other naturally follows. Start small. Incorporate mindfulness, meditation, and self-compassion into your routine. Be gentle with yourself, stay consistent, and watch as your inner and outer worlds align in harmony. This is your path to healing, not just to survive, but to flourish, to live with clarity, purpose, and inner peace. Take the first step today, and remember, the journey is just as important as the destination. If this video inspired you, please like and share it with others who may need this message. And don't forget to subscribe to Life Lessons for more Buddhist insights that will guide you toward a peaceful, balanced life.